Hello, Grandma here. A lot of people ask me about butter during the Great Depression. So I want to talk about butter. And we have to talk about the milkman that used to come to when my mom was uh, growing up and especially during the De Great Depression they had a milkman that would come and bring the bottled milk and my mother would always say how the bottled milk had the cream on top. So they would take the cream and they would make butter out of the cream. And I, as a little girl, I remember helping my grandmother make the butter because the milk was not homogenized like it is today. When the milk is not homogenized, the cream comes to the top and you could scrape it off and make butter with it. This is a milk bottle just like the milkman used to deliver. This is non-homogenized milk. So the cream comes to the top and then you can scrape the cream off and then that's what you make the butter out of. So I thought we would make the butter like my grandmother and I used to make it. I opened the milk and now I'm going to put a spoon in it to see if we have cream on top. And yes we do. So I'm going to put this in a pot. We skim the cream off the milk. In case there wasn't enough, I do have a bottle of heavy cream. Let's see what's on top of this one. This is really thick. I'm going to pour enough in the bowl to make some butter. I poured in about a cup, so I think that's, that should be enough. I'm going to use my old-fashioned egg beater and beat up the cream. This is how we used to make butter. This takes a while to do and first it will be whipped cream. It's been a few minutes and as you could see it's beginning to thicken up. Right now it looks like it's whipped cream so I have to keep going. I moved it to a more narrow container so I could get the, the beater will work better, get more of the cream to make the butter. As it gets closer to the butter consistency, it gets harder to turn the egg beater. It's getting a lot thicker. It's almost butter. It's starting to break into butter and you could see the buttermilk separating. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to pour off the buttermilk now. So this is what's left after I poured off the buttermilk. So now I have to keep going. This is what it looks like after it turns to butter. You can see that more buttermilk separated. Now I'm going to put the butter in another bowl. We're going to press out as much liquid as we can. I put the butter in a bowl and I'm going to use my wooden spoon and press out as much liquid as I can. You gotta press it as hard as you can and get it as dry as possible. And I'm gonna drain the liquid off as I go along. The less liquid in the butter, the longer it lasts before going bad. This is how I used to make the butter with my grandmother. It brings back great memories to me. And this is how my grandmother made it during the Great Depression. This looks beautiful, so now I'm going to put my butter in my little glass container and Grandpa and I will be enjoying it. We will enjoy the homemade butter.
And this is the leftover buttermilk that a lot of people like to drink. Or you could use it in a recipe. I'm going to spread some butter on a piece of bread so Grandpa could try. Oh, it's so nice. It spreads so beautiful. How's it taste, Grandpa? I'll let you know in a minute, Ma. Tastes good, Ma. Got a nice flavor to it. It tastes better than store-bought butter. I hope so. After I did all that beating. Yeah, got a nice flavor to it. And you know what they say. Everything is better with butter. That's true. It also tastes a lot fresher than store-bought butter. So that's how people got butter during the Great Depression, and butter was not rationed during the Great Depression. And later, during World War II, there was food rationing, but not during the Depression. People just didn't have money to buy it. Mm. Oh my God, so good. Mm.